Hello, my name is Majegs and I recommend video games for busy people. If you've got a busy life and find yourself spending more time researching what your next game is going to be instead of just playing your next game, tune into my channel where all I do is recommend video games that fit into those busy lives either because they're easy to get into, easy to learn, have nice quality of life factors, all kinds of different reasons for how they can fit into your schedule. But without further ado, today let's talk about the Lamplighters League, which is a 1930s adventure romp with all kinds of theming around Indiana Jones and The Mummy and Lovecraft Horror. Everything you could ask for and a little bit more. Let's get into it. In the Lamplighters League, you'll assemble a team of ne'er-do-wells, of con men and outcasts, and this woman named Ingrid from all the promos, who I don't think she's either a con man or an outcast. I'm not sure how she fits into that category, but she does, and she's there. Together, you'll stand opposed to the Banished Court, this mysterious entity group of factions trying to bring about the end of the world by tracking down the tower at the end of the world. And it's a great game for busy people because it combines a lot of elements that I enjoy into one manila-wrapped, twine-bound parcel, just waiting for you to unwrap. And while there's a little more jank around the edges than I would normally prefer, it was easy enough for me to look past them because of all the good stuff. Especially since I can get it for free on Game Pass. Well, not for free, for whatever I'm paying on Game Pass. And I'm recommending it for busy people for a few different reasons. It's an episodic game with a short core gameplay loop. It strikes a pleasant balance between remarkably simple and aggressively complex and it provides a portal into a thematic world that I think is underrepresented in media nowadays. I'm gonna start at the end of that list with the underrepresented thematic world that the game takes place in because I think it'll help give a little bit of context into how the game actually plays. So Lamplighter's League takes place in the dirty 30s, a not so great time for the world as it careened into global economic crisis and eventually World War II. Out of the 30s, though, came the hit characters of our B-list action movies that we all love. Explorers from the Golden Age whose likenesses would inspire Indiana Jones, Nathan Drake, and Brendan Fraser from The Mummy. One historic detail not taught, though, which is explored by the Lamplighters League, is the secret war waged between a band of these explorer misfits and the mysterious Banished Court, which sought to achieve global domination by discovering and harnessing the power kept in the tower at the end of the world. Leaning into the mystery of exploration and the unknown nature of eldritch horror, the Lamplighters League sees you gallivanting around the globe, searching for allies in unlikely places, sabotaging the efforts of the Banished Court, and trying to find your own way to the tower. Hour. And it does so in a loving way, paying homage to all of the tropes, good and bad, that came out of the explorer genre. There's the almost certainly impacted by PTSD American World War I veteran who speaks in short, gruff sentences and wields what can only be two Colt New Service revolvers. What do you say, partners? There's Ingrid, the femme fatale who can knock out a dude with more than just a look. Sleep well. And these crooks and ne'er-do-wells will find themselves careening across the world, and the in-game design does a great job representing each different location. From the city streets of Marseille to the wild jungles of Madagascar, and I don't mean representing the real places themselves, they didn't send people out and capture exactly what these places looked like in the 1930s. No, they represent how they would feel in an adventure movie. You know, the campiness, the mystery of eldritch horror, and the borderline one-dimensional characters was just a fun way to feel like being a part of a movie. Okay, now you have kind of an idea about the setting of the game, then the gameplay loop will make a little bit more sense. Your group, at first simply guns for hire, stealing and sabotaging for the mysterious Mr. Locke, have accidentally drawn the ire of the nefarious Banished Court. With no choice now but to stick together, your ne'er-do-wells and Mr. Locke stand together as the only thing keeping the Banished Court from plunging the world into darkness. Located on a hidden island that functions as a safe house and in-between mission hub, you'll pick from a list of available missions on a world map. These missions broadly fit into the category of hurt the banished court or improve the lamplighter's positions. Hurting the court means sabotaging their efforts, so damaging their equipment or stealing their information, altogether preventing them from building their presence in the world itself and acquiring the location of the tower at the end of the world. On the other hand, improving the lamplighter's position generally gets you additional characters to use, valuable resources for upgrades, and gets you closer to dismantling the various factions of the Banished Court altogether. Upon loading into a mission, which as an aside I will point out are all handcrafted and then procedurally filled with enemies, 
Anyway, upon loading into a mission, the game sets you into infiltration mode, wherein you control your squad real time, staying out of sight of the enemies until you either complete your mission, decide to go loud, or otherwise get detected by patrols and guards. For me, it was like being in my own Indiana Jones movie, where at any moment I could make a wrong step and then have bullets buzzing past my head as I tried to evade or disable enough enemies to turn the tides in my favor at which point the game transitions into a turn-based mode. After completing whatever the primary objective is, you return to the hub world where you can then view your character conversations, upgrade agent abilities, and deploy into your next mission. It's a satisfying loop that's quick to carry out since each mission takes somewhere between 20 and 40 minutes, and the hub world is all menu-based so you won't be walking slowly from character to character to get your upgrades and conversations and occasionally getting lost if you're like me. I probably don't need to hammer home then that that means if you only have an hour of playtime, you can both get a mission done and then do your upgrading and character conversations and all the hub world activities you want. All these components come together to make Lamplighter's League a consistently engaging, variably challenging game, despite its rough around the edges details. Its strength certainly lies in its theming and writing, but it does a good job of combining familiar game concepts into a package that boils down my favorite parts of the XCOM-like genre. It's got some rough bits around the edges, like some clunky control schemes or the camera snapping into unusable locations, and this one annoying detail where anytime I tab out during a loading screen, the game stops loading until I click back in so I can't like go change a YouTube video while it's loading. But all in all, it's a combination of fun mechanics and a simple gameplay loop and the killer setting that got me past all that jank. For the low price of whatever I'm paying for Game Pass, I'm more than happy to recommend Lamplighter's League for any busy person interested in alternative 1930s campy B-movies and turn-based strategy management games. For those reasons and more, I'm awarding Lamplighter's League 5 mysterious cards out of 5 mysterious cards. Highly recommended.